Hello everybody, my name is Raccoon Bro, and welcome back to another reaction video. Now, in case you guys haven't seen my last reaction video, which <laughs> it honestly hasn't been doing too well in views, so uh, I'll say it anyway here again just in case. Uh, my new audio interface is in, and so for all of you who have been saying that my voice is too quiet, that I need to turn the mic volume up, uh, well... Uh, it, it was already all the way up, I just had a really awful audio interface. But now that I got a new one with uh, m for my birthday, my videos are going to come out a lot better now. And I think you guys are going to see that uh, firsthand here. With today's reaction video, it's another YouTube channel that we haven't talked about on this channel yet, but I have been watching for a very long time. Well, relatively speaking, of course. And I'm talking about Skate Frillis Productions. This man has done quite a few things. He's done live action versions of SpongeBob episodes. He's done a lot of YouTube poops. And I highly recommend all of them, especially the Star Wars ones and Shark Tale. They're absolutely phenomenal. And he's recently been doing a bunch of reviews about animation, like animated movies and shows and whatnot. Uh, and he's been focusing a lot on DreamWorks, specifically the Shrek franchise, why Shrek 2 is a perfect sequel, why Shrek the Third was a cinematic disaster, and today he's talking about why Shrek the fourth one, Shrek Forever After that is, is actually an underrated gem. I haven't seen this movie in a long time, but I have been putting off watching this review for a while because I wanted to record my reaction, and I wanted to wait until I figured out my audio interface and also, you know, for finals to be over too, so see this as kind of a way for me to, you know, wind down and uh, kind of enjoy myself a bit. I also have a bunch of other videos that I've been re recording too that uh, will be in the backlog that I'll post over Thanksgiving break, and uh, they're a bit more experimental than my other ones, so I hope you guys will let me know what you think about them. But anyway, with all that being said, I'm very much looking forward to this review, so let's get in to the video. Oh man, I totally forgot that this thing released more than a week ago. Sorry if I'm a little late to this one, guys, but oh well. I, I, I know it's going to be worth it, though. It's Gay Frillis, after all. Let's do this. Persona 5. Oh, man, those are com some good posters. What? Of course he's not reviewing Shrek 4. He's walking over the head. <sighs> Just doesn't make sense, Fran. James would never pass up a Shrek group. <gasps> I don't get it either, Marco. But some things you just gotta live with. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll review Shrek 4. <laughs> Funding for Shaper Illus is provided by Skillshare. Tune until the end to find out how you can try Skillshare absolutely free. Now that was, that's what I call the deal of a life. That was a Mega Mind reference, later, wasn't it? Who, well, this was a long time coming. Shrek Forever After is the most underappreciated film in the entire DreamWorks pantheon. Hell yeah. Sure, you've got your Mega Minds and Eldorados and... Over the Hedge? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> even, even Hedge. Aww. But those are dedicated fans that a ton of memes to their name. They yeah. are enduring cult classics, to be sure. But Shrek 4? Nope. Nobody is talking about or memeing this movie. Everyone sees it as a mediocre or bad conclusion to the series. Probably because Shrek the Third tainted the entire franchise in the eyes of many. Seriously, <laughs> it's all Shrek the Third's oh, fault. fault. If this movie didn't exist and we just had a trilogy on our hands, then people would probably at least consider this a serviceable conclusion, like Kung Fu Panda 3 or How to Train Your Dragon 3. <laughs> this piece of shit ruined everything. Aww. Uh. I wish that movie was never born. But that's a story for another day, aka January 1st, 2019. It's Go watch the dawn that. Of a new day, Go watch that review. It's very good. How the follow-up not only redeemed the franchise, but ended it off on an even higher note that it started on. Damn. I said it. Shrek 4 is better than Shrek 1. It had no chance in hell of ever topping 2, of course. But I genuinely prefer Shrek Forever After over the original film. It's, it's been a while since I've seen Shrek be Forever sure, After. But I think its emotional beats and story hit even harder than the first one. And a mm. lot of that is owed to the reverence it has for the entire Shrek franchise. Movie number one in particular. It hmm. feels like this movie's screenwriters just really cared about the overarching story of Shrek. And sending him out on a high note as of the time I'm writing this. But why Shrek, Shrek 5. Oh. And conclusion to the legend of Shrek. Well, let's talk about that. Let's do it. An ogre's end. So it's no secret that Shrek, for the longest time, was DreamWorks' golden goose. I love Puss in Boots, by the way. The top four highest-grossing DreamWorks movies in the U.S. are the four <laughs> Shrek films. 
Puss in Boots didn't do nearly as well, in case you're curious. And these numbers hold up with the worldwide box office as well, mm -hmm. with the notable exception of the first movie being not quite as successful as its sequels. So the Shrek sequels made a ton of money in spite of a significant dip between 2 and 3, and an ever so slight dip from 3 and 4. Mm. Logic dictates that DreamWorks keep going, releasing more and more Shrek movies until the sun blows up. Oh. Lord knows that's what Blue Sky's been doing. Who the fuck asked for five Ice Age oh, movies? God. They actually stopped I hate Shrek Ice Age. here. They even canceled a planned fifth film for the sake of ending the story on what they thought was the perfect way to conclude. I hate all of those movies, Katzenberg by the way. Jeffrey himself made this decision, which is weirdly out of character for him, if we're being honest. <laughs> lo and behold, the story ended here until DreamWorks went bankrupt, got sold, and now Illumination is rebooting Shrek. That's nice. Maybe if they Damn it, Illumination! 5, they wouldn't be in this situation. It's a possibility. But the thing about DreamWorks is that no matter how many subpar movies they may have made during the 2000s, you can't deny that they care about the artistic mm. integrity of their franchises. They can make a terrible one-off movie here or there <laughs> and some shorts or whatever, but when they get an idea with a ton of merit behind it, oh, they hell put yeah. their damnest into developing that story further Kung with Fu each Panda, new installment. How to Kung Fu Panda Dragon. is a continuous narrative that flows perfectly from one movie to the next. How oh, to I love those movies so much! It's a continuous narrative from one movie to the next. So Madagascar, good. as utterly bonkers and uh, not really yes. that good as it is, still tells a continuous story that progresses from one movie to the next. She was Do good. you think Illumination cares about artistic integrity and ongoing narratives no no stupid question okay, no do you think pixar cares about that stuff hmm. do you think any of the pixar sequels turned out this decade regardless uh... of their quality were created because pixar genuinely had a desire to continue the story of the original uh... film the no. only movies you can say that about are cars 3 and maybe toy story 4 maybe <laughs> And while you could argue Monsters University and Finding Dory are subjectively good such great sequels, they didn't really need one. Sure, they turned out nice in the end, and I'm thankful for that, but it's not sequels to go too crazy over. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah. I mean, they keep insisting it was a story-driven decision to make that movie, but I'm sure mm. Disney was salivating at the thought of a new Toy Story for the sake of merch. So why let's is, give him half a point for that. Why is Everything he just else, there? don't make me laugh. So if Pixar you can make makes him sequels for money. On your own. Illumination makes sequels for money. DreamWorks makes sequels for art. And money. And money pretty soon, but Lord knows. Trolls World Shrek 5 would have made them even more money, but they didn't make... Hey, at least World Tour is going to have Rachel Bloom in it. That is, I... I can at least look look forward to her voice performance because she's very talented. Make it because Shrek 4 is art. It is yeah. the emotional conclusion to a phenomenal overarching story that everyone perceives as a farce because the movie right before it was simply terrible. <laughs> Shrek Forever After takes the main character to a very interesting place. Mm. He got everything he wanted. Friends, love, a family. The story should be over, right? Well, no. Mm. Assuming a character can just settle down and have a happily ever after is kind of silly. Mm. Ideally, that's what you want for a character, but they're not going to be happy every day from then on. Steven Settling Universe down movie. and building a life with someone can sometimes make you long for the life you left behind. Even if you love your new life, it can get exhausting. I think mm. the basic premise for this movie is immensely relatable and makes for an interesting character study for Shrek. See, Shrek was alone so long, he didn't even know that he was lonely. All he'd ever known was how to hold his own, but now he wants to hold Fiona too. And his children. And Donkey. These are some pretty big <laughs> changes in Shrek's life, and having all of this happen in such a short amount of time could be overwhelming and stressful. I also think the pointlessness of Shrek the Third plays into this to a degree as well. Hmm. Shrek learned practically nothing about being a father by the end of that movie, so you can't <laughs> expect him to be good at it now. It's understandable that he'd want to briefly return to a time before he was thrust into all these new roles. That of a best friend, a husband, a father. All concepts completely foreign to Shrek before Lord Farquaad dumped those fairy tale creatures on the swamp. Back when oh. the world... Oh, I never noticed that shoe in the background. I, I, like, every time I've watched this that movie, I never once noticed that. Damn. ...made sense. I think It's a Wonderful Life meets Shrek is a surprisingly natural combo as a result. I hmm. mean, Shrek is already about magic and stuff anyway, so a magical contract that makes him lose his current life? Sure, sounds good to me. It's not like he's cheating on his wife. He's just gonna sign a magic contract to do ogre hijinks, then come back like he never left. Easy peasy. Lemon right? spicy. But I should probably address a certain scene that some people find controversial. Ah, uh, yes. So I'm just gonna come out and say it. Do the roar is funny as shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not only Not is it clearly an intentional homage to the 2005 DreamWorks animation classic Madagascar, but yeah, honestly, it just kind of cracks me up. Not sure what else there is to say. Oh, also, the scene where Shrek yells at Fiona is fine. At first glance, 
Yeah, what he says is jarringly nasty. Mm -hmm. You mean back before you rescued me from the dragon's keep? Exactly! That's vicious, yes. I would be pretty hurt by that if I were her. But people say nasty things they don't mean when they're frustrated, let's be real. And mm -hmm. it takes a while for them to fully come to terms with their mistakes. It's pretty common for people to not immediately regret something mean they said or did because they're overtaken by anger and they're convinced it was justified. The fact that Shrek doesn't immediately regret what he said makes his eventual remorse all the more satisfying. It's relatable also, as remember, hell. remember, he's not a regular dude. He's a ogre. <laughs> Ogres be mean. I mean, the whole point of Shrek 2 is that Shrek can't change the fact that he's an ogre. Whether mm -hmm. your parents like it or not, I am an ogre. She's a princess, and you're an ogre. She's a princess, and I'm an ogre. Oh, yeah, God. An ogre. So here in Shrek 4, when he says this, I'm an ogre. Was that a, was that a little preview of Shrek 2 retold? Oh boy. And I'm not gonna apologize for acting like one. You can see how it falls in line with the Shrek we know. He's not gonna be perfect at being nice and thoughtful. This is new territory for him. Good mm. lord, his dad trying to eat him. I wouldn't exactly call him an expert at this whole love and affection thing. I love that face. It's fine that he needs some room to grow. Overall, this is the perfect direction to take Shrek's character arc. He learned to love himself and open his heart up to others in the first two movies. He learned how to... Uh, uh, I guess give a speech to a bunch of evil villains and turn them good. <laughs> that really helps him prepare for. Yeah. The and now I he guess. gets to learn the value of loving what he has, and that love and connection is the ultimate source of fulfillment in a person's life. Hmm. So I think Shrek's journey throughout the movie is very interesting. But he's not the only beloved ogre character with an incredibly compelling journey in this film. Let's talk about, about? Cookie. Oh. Wait, what's this? That's my chimichanga stand. <laughs> Cookie, you silly head. You shouldn't be worrying about chimichangas when there's a ruthless dictator plotting to enslave and or exterminate your entire race. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Fiora now. <laughs> was that Craig Robinson, by the way? Nuclear I take think it for y'all. Coming right up. Fiona is the best she's ever been in the entire franchise. I've seen this preview, by the way, movie. so. Really think about it. Her story uh, relevance of, uh, has been on a great A lot of familiar territory here for me. She's an essential character in the first film, and there's a fairly decent chunk of depth to her there. Even though she needs to be saved by Shora and Donkle, she's still capable of beating the shit out of organization tight pants, and she's insecure about her whole ogre curse. But don't cry, Fiona. Don't you know that Shrek lacks a B? <laughs> yeah, I forgot bee. about that. In the end, she learns to love herself for who she is and accept Killed those little kids. Body positivity. Then Shrek 2 rolls around and I'm not gonna lie, this movie's biggest flaw that I neglected to mention way back when is how much Fiona kind of gets shafted from a lot of the narrative. She's yeah. essential to Shrek's character arc, which is a really, really fantastic one. But she herself does not receive nearly as much focus. She just doesn't seem to have much of a presence here compared to the first movie, where she could be funny, badass, heartfelt, and the subject of a dynamic character change. But ultimately, I <laughs> do kind of give Shrek 2 a pass in this regard, because the final decision of the movie is hers. She oh, has yeah. a chance to return to her beautiful princess form and live the life she's always dreamed about. Uh, but she actively says, I no, love that ending I so much. It's be so beautiful. Live out my life at the Shrek in the swamp karaoke dance party it's now so that's beautiful Shrek the, Shrek the third is an embarrassment to nature. Fiona has no purpose mm. to this story at all. She's just baby. Ooh. She gets nothing. She loses. Or rather, we, the audience, lose. Good day, sir. Good this movie day. signified a shift in focus from the beautiful, unlikely romance that was at the heart of the first two movies to stupid garbage with no coherent messages or emotions. Why is he Shrek naked? comes in and says, Hey, Let's make Fiona, like, a vital part of the story again. And so she is. Yeah. It's the narrative revolves around her for the first time since the first movie. Though they do something neat by inverting her story arc. Instead of being a princess by day who's ashamed of being an ogre at night, she embraces her warrior ogre side and hides the fact that she becomes a princess during the day. Nobody mm. rescued her in this timeline, and it really got to her emotionally oh and psychologically. Oh my god. She lets Shrek know through no uncertain terms how brutal it was to live in that tower all these years. Which is something we didn't really touch on in the first movie. Oh, Here it's, it's like, so oh brutal. shit, the Shrek movie is dark. Did you live all alone in a miserable tower? Did you cry yourself to sleep every night waiting for a true love that never came? And I know that you sleep by candlelight because every time you close your eyes, 
You're afraid you're gonna wake up back in oh, the tower. So, wow. Um, so. Yeah, oh, that I makes me cry. I became a jaded warrior who rejects this whole princess nonsense. Uh, this is just tragic. And again, Shrek 1 kind of glossed over a lot of this. Oh, wait a minute. Shrek the musical covered her time in the tower. Oh, no. I forgot about song. that. Because this musical is a complete joke. Also, they make fun of her being bipolar. And then they proceed to rhyme that verse with, I'm a very gifted bowler. Why are you the way that you are? I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. Okay, back to good Shrek products. Fiona has had it oh, rough boy. in this universe. Not only did she have all this tower shit to go through, but after rescuing herself, she finds out that her parents were Thanos, a tyrannical elf baby man rules the land, and the remaining I love that Thanos is now a verb, thanks to Infinity War. Defeated. Well, shit. I'd want revenge for my parents and ogre kind. Hell yeah, I'd organize a revolution. Why not? Forget all this happily ever after and Prince Charming nonsense. Oh yeah, real quick. Before you say Prince Charming would have saved her in a world where Shrek didn't exist. Nah, nah, nah. nah. Prince Charming would have got eaten by the dragon, ya goof. That's my headcanon anyway. Not sure what happened to Fairy Godmother, but uh, maybe Rumble took care of her. I don't know. Who knows? No. So a lot of commenters told me that in actuality, Charmy wouldn't have bothered saving Fiona since he and Mummy were only ever after the crown anyway. Mm. And Fiona don't have it no more. So yeah, that's a better headcanon. Clearly, I need to study the Shrek lore some more. But I think the real question about Rumple ruled society is what happened lore. to the whole Farquaad? Is he just chilling over there in Duloc while Wigs McGee owns Far Far Away? Are they gonna fight? That's the spin-off Disney Plus series. I, I mean, like Farquaad didn't Logan really have too much of a presence Farquaad, in the, baby. In the other one anyway. Here. Okay, back to Fion. Overall, it's Fion. Like really novel to see a woman who is so hell-bent on the idea of true love solving everything, rejecting it entirely in favor of making things better on her own. And that leads to some compelling drama because we know that true love really is the way to win the war and fix everything. So watching Shrek try and win over a world-weary, stoic Fiona who has no interest in love whatsoever is really neat. Hey, um, Scott? Hey, y'all. He <laughs> <his current needs, laughs> I love no Scott. I love that man. Of ...liberating the kingdom, freeing all ogres, and taking down Shane Dawson. The seeds <laughs> that are planted when, after his romantic gestures don't work, he trains with her instead. Ooh. It's a wholesome montage, and their dimension-displaced connection is made clear not only to Puss, but to the audience as well. Mm. I got more stuff to say about Ogre Lady, but we'll save the rest for later. For now, mm. I want to turn the spotlight over to our delightfully devilish villain. Oh, I was looking forward to this. I was looking forward to this. It's great, y'all are just mean. Imagine thinking Prince Charming isn't the worst villain oh, in the series. Oh, God. This post was made by the Rumpelstiltskin gang. <laughs> as a matter of fact, this post was Imagine thinking Prince Charming isn't the worst villain in the series. Oh, okay. This post was made by the Rumpelstiltskin gang. <laughs> as a matter of fact, the villains are a great way of telling the quality of the Shrek film you're watching. <laughs> Pretty good. E. Godlike. More irritating than the mumps. <laughs> <laughs> Great! Rumpelstiltskin Grrr. is a completely new, fascinating take on a Shrek villain. Rather than being some pompous fool in an inexplicable position of power, or a bad bitch who's basically a world-famous celebrity that we had to cancel for being transphobic, some gender-confused wolf. <laughs> She's going down. Rumpel oh. is a societal reject. No one likes him. He's a sleazy little bugger, but mm. at the same time, he's just so fun to watch. And funny. I mean, come on. Well, how about the day I met Donkey? Now, there's a day I'd like to take back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. I love his design. <laughs> I love his wigs. I love his voice. You know that one name you see in the opening credits of a ton of SpongeBob episodes? Yeah, that one. Walt oh. Dorn is just an animator who recorded a temporary track of Rumpel's dialogue. Oh, yeah, Walt Dorn! Random celebrity. But his scratch track was so good that they figured, yeah, let's just use that. Why not? Yeah. A decision that could have been perceived as lazy actually turned into one of the character's best attributes. His voice is vibrant, slimy, cold, and delightfully evil all at once. His mannerisms are distinct and quirky without... I love it whenever, whenever they do that. Because so many times it, they'll just have somebody... Uh, you know, do test lines so that they can get a bigger name to do it. But, you know, you'll have rare instances, like, for example, Roger Craig Smith uh, in the Planes movie or uh, that uh, one storyboard artist for that Muppet Babies show I heard uh, doing Kermit where they'll just, like, say, 
honestly, we, you got you should just do it. So yeah, I that's so cool, man. Oh, love it. Without being annoying, and overall, he raises the stakes way higher than they've ever been. Rumple literally mm. rules the entire world, and Shrek will cease to exist by the end of the day. That's banane. In the other movies, Shrek could technically just walk away from the main conflict and go home. He'd lose Fiona, sure, but then he'd just return to the status quo. He has his precious swamp, that's all he needs. But nah, bro. In this movie, there is no swamp. The entire world has been thrown into decay, and the fate of everyone and everything hangs in the balance. Not just Shrek's love life. This guy did what no other villain in the Shrek series ever managed to do. Ugh. He won. He outsmarted the good guys and took charge of the entire kingdom. Yeah, Charmin did that too, but it lasted like 15 minutes, so whatever, who cares. <laughs> Not only does Rumpel keep the stake consistently high throughout the entire film, but he manages to be quirky and fun the whole time. You want to hate the sniveling twerp, but at the same time, it's like, good for him. He earned that victory. I mean, look at this scene towards the end. Shrek turns himself in to get any wish he desires, and he wishes for the freedom of all ogres. Poof, they free. But uh-oh, it didn't work for Fiona. You agreed to free all ogres. Oh yeah. But Fiona isn't all ogre, is she? Oh. <laughs> Nobody smart but me! <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. I'm not even sure what else I can say about this guy. He's just a great villain, and I don't understand why people dislike him. Is it because he looks nothing like how he did in Shrek the Third? Ugh, say whatever. Say it with me now, kids. This movie is not canon. <laughs> Thank you. Namaste. I guess that's all I have to say about Mumble Wilt. I can talk about this little bounty hunter buddy for a second here. The Pied Piper. Oh, this Holy guy's funny. Shit, the imagination here is off the chain. He's a flute tootin' bounty hunter who captures people by forcing them to dance with his magical melodic music. And he lifts your socks up for you. That's an amazing concept. Four words you will never hear about Shrek the Third. The Pied Piper sequence is so entertaining and fun, and if you really want to complain that he appeared in Shrek 1 and therefore it's a continuity error, may I remind you that he was probably some other guy with a magic flute. Use your imagination. Anyway, I love the way the villains in this movie are framed, with their kooky mania being a perfect complement to the overall dark tone. Hey, speaking of such a thing, let us discuss that now. The tone and atmosphere. I really need to rewatch oh, this movie. Are you expecting the humor and music section of the video? That's nope. nice. Now let's go. This is the alternate dimension where humor and music were never born. I'll be the first to admit that this movie is not as funny as Shrek 1 or 2. Mm -hmm. Not that its jokes generally don't land. They're mostly solid, though there are a couple clunkers here and there. You've got a friend. What the hell is that? It's <laughs> also the fact that this movie chooses not to attempt jokes all that often. It prioritizes its dark tone above all else. And as one of those weirdos who genuinely cares about the emotional and personal impact of a Shrek movie's story and character development, I love it. It's easy to simply write this off as a comedic franchise with sprinkles of drama on top, but I don't think that's what Shrek is at all. That's how I'd describe Madagascar, which prioritizes its comedy above all else mm -hmm. without really considering story at all. But Shrek, much like Kung Fu Panda, has always felt like a comedy drama franchise to me. Mm. And for the final installment to be much darker and take itself a lot more seriously than you'd expect for this series, I really admire that. It ups those stakes I talked about earlier. This shouldn't mm, be a farty stakes. farce. You know why? Because it's awesome. Take a look at this scene from the beginning of the movie, before Shrek signs his life away. The party scene is a perfect summation of what the Shrek franchise has become after a certain movie whose name won't be mentioned in this household. Uh. Loud. Annoying. Babyish. Watered down and neutered beyond all belief. The fact that it takes place at what used to be the seedy and dark poison apple really drives Ooh. it all home. It irritates nice me just egg. as much as it irritates Shrek. Except do the roar, kid. He's funny. <laughs> Shoot it. Do it. <laughs> Come on. But yeah, this scene is an intentional mockery of all the shit its predecessor set up. The spin-offs and the merch and the memes. Well, Shrek has had mm. enough of being a meme. He wants to be a monster again, damn it. I, I never thought of that. used to be an ogre. Now I'm just a jolly green joke. So the rest of the movie takes place I in a post-apocalyptic landscape where he's hated, hunted down, constantly belittled and rejected, and overall having a bad time. <laughs> it allows this film to fall far more in line with the atmospheric, quieter sides of Shrek 1, and especially 2. Shrek is once again on the outskirts of society, but in a completely fresh way compared to the previous installments. So I love the dark, brutal, almost gothic aesthetic of this movie. It heightens the intense drama being felt by our main characters and the resistance they're mounting. We've still got our funny man villain who's currently on top of the world, so having him hold on 
found that most of the movie's humor for us is a good idea. But Shrek and the gang have a way bigger threat than they've ever faced, and a very adult romance that needs rekindling. The last thing we need is a stupid ass wizard playing new age music to set the mood for us. Just thought I might help set the mood. Are we cringing yet? Speaking of music, this movie <laughs> sure does have it, and it's okay. I like yeah. the song choice in Shrek is terrorizing the village, and the cover of I'm a Believer at the very end is phenomenal. Otherwise, it's kind of forgettable, but not garbage. So that's a plus. Again, with this tonal shift, I'm not sure this movie really could have gotten away with the usual pop culture music implementation in Schwank film. A small price to pay for salvation. I mean, yeah. just look at all this atmosphere. This movie makes you uncomfortable <laughs> by taking familiar elements from across the Shrek series. Forgot about that joke. And beyond recognition. That's what you get in this bizarro alternate timeline. Shrek's swamp is all dried out and barren since he never lived there. Far, far away is in complete shambles. Not just the baby shambles Prince Charming established in the last movie, but like real shambles. Damn. And then there's Fiona's tower. Oh. No lava, no dragon. Just completely abandoned and decaying. It's like, oh shit. I guess things really are screwed, huh? Oh, Jinji has man. gone off the deep end. Donkey is really scruffy looking and downtrodden since he was basically sold into slavery. Puss was clearly the inspiration for Fat Thor, though I think this movie handles that plotline way better than Endgame did personally. Mm. Oh, you know what? Hearing Donkey light up when Shrek tells him he's a Dada in the other dimension is just the most wholesome thing I've ever heard. And you have little mutant donkey dragon babies. I do? You saw what happened. She's gonna think I'm crazy. I'm a daddy? That's Aww. another great aspect of the movie. The glimmers of hope present in a dark, grim scenario. I really like the gung-ho attitude of the other ogres in the rebellion. And, oh hey, other ogres. It's so cool to see a whole civilization of them and see how tiny Shrek is compared to these other hmm. ones. It's a great visual expression of how inexperienced he is with this whole war thing. Oh, and one more thing I have to bring up is the animation. <laughs> Hot damn, it's stunning. The glow up from the first three movies to this one is really something to write home about. It feels like Shrek finally made the jump to an HD console. And yeah. It's in all of the visuals, action set pieces, and just how overall bright and sh 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 shiny it is. So, yeah. Here we have a visually stunning and intensely dramatic Shrek movie that sacrifices a lot of the humor and music the franchise is generally known for. Mm. I guess I understand why this decision alienated some people, but there are those who choose to ignore the dramatic tone and atmosphere because Shrek was only ever just a spoof of Disney fairy tales for them. No comedy? Well then why bother watching, am I right? And Honestly, mm. that's kind of a regressive outlook to have on the series as a whole. Yeah. Shrek is a carefully constructed, well-told, intricately plotted narrative with a ton of nuance, depth, and you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, LAYERS! And being the conclusion to an emotional, expertly told fairy tale, which has just that one terrible middle chapter we can rip out of the book, mm. this movie ends things off by taking us back to the beginning. Yes! Oh, I'm looking forward to this! I love thematic and narrative consistency between installments that doesn't feel like a rote rehash. That is a fine line to walk, and many sequels completely fumble it. Hmm. But Shrek Forever After calls back to the series' roots so expertly in a way that enhances its own unique story. So as a result, nothing here feels like leftovers. It's remarkable. So let's talk some story. Right off the bat, this film expertly weaves its way into the Shrek saga by giving us some organic connective tissue between the events of Shrek 1 and 2. The king and queen, desperate and tired of waiting for this true love nonsense the fairy godmother insisted on for no malicious self-serving purposes, I'm sure, they turn to the dealmaker Rumpelstiltskin to lift Fiona's curse. This may be our last hope. Besides, he does come highly recommended by King Midas. They're about to sign their kingdom away, but then nope! Someone saved the princess! So now we've established why this new baddie has beef with Shrunk, and it's funny to see that the book that opens up every real Shrek movie is a literal book this pathetic man baby is reading in a bookstore. And look at yeah. Pinocchio works here. Good for him. I'm so glad he and the gang landed on their feet and got jobs in Far Far Away. That's just wholesome. As the yeah. opening progresses, we see more of that sort of meta commentary about the state of the Shrek franchise I talked about earlier. Shrek is tired of Kitty Shit the Third. Hmm. He wants to go back to being an all-star again. <laughs> Those were the days. Somebody. The Shrek signs Rumble's <laughs> deal and gets his chance to be his old self. Yeah. yeah! Giving us a reprise Don't of that iconic line. Where, you know, the right right he wraps it all up with a mud angel, seemingly perfectly content with being alone and hated. But mm. then things go off the rails. Uh -oh. Fiona is wanted, the swamp is gone, and Shrek gets captured by Mabel. You have the right to shut your mouth! 
This is oh my god. Donkey, and we get a fascinating dynamic change where Shrek has to convince Donkey to befriend him. We also see the ugly underside of Shrek's desire to be hated, where an angry mob does their whole angry mob thing. That's rough, buddy. So after oh. some very well done villainous exposition scenes and an action music escape sequence akin to the ones in the first two movies, finally, Shrek and Donkey are free and back together. Except Donsley is not about to trust this weirdo giant monster who just sang a weird unfunny song. Bye, bitch. <laughs> so Shrink sits alone. Entirely, utterly alone. He notices his daughter's doll in his pocket, and it all hits him at once. The importance of love and affection. The value of his family. Mm. How wrong he was to leave them behind. And so, for the first time in the whole series, he cries. I can't stress enough how vital this is. It's probably written on the Ten Commandments that Shrek does not cry. Even during the Hollywood oh, sequel, it's probably written on the Ten Commandments that Shrek... Tomato is love, Tomato is life, Miguel.png, thou shalt subscribe to all of the editor's channels. That was his mistake. Memes were a mistake. Granddad. Granddad! Haha, <laughs> less Jedi, bad funny. Thou shalt not eat lunch in this town. Why is Gojira and Jaguar not 10? Uh, whatever. Shrek does not cry. Even during the Hallelujah sequence, which is the scene in every Shrek movie where there's a super sad song because Shrek is alone and about to lose all the good things in his life. Even during sad posting hours, Shrek doesn't cry. They even make a point of this in Shrek 2 where he gets Donkey to cry in order to activate the fairy godmother's card. Shrek does not cry, probably due to toxic ogre masculinity. So it's no coincidence that this moment... This rare occurrence of emotional vulnerability is what finally gets Donkey to trust him. And now we get a less explicit callback to the first film, not through dialogue or a familiar location, but a classic dynamic. Donkey is once again Shrek's only friend and confidant, which means their dynamic is the best it's been since, well, the original. <laughs> again, I kind of ignored this since Donkey was really funny in Shrek 2, but he doesn't serve the same crucial narrative purpose there as he did in the first movie. Mm. He's just a wacky sidekick for Shrek and eventually Puss to play off of. It's hard to stress just how important Donkey was to the original film's narrative, however. And finally, we get a return to that same heartfelt, unlikely friendship. Together, they find out that true love's kiss will break the spell, and Shrek races to Fiona's tower to save her. But it's too late. She's gone! <laughs> Shrek he sees the tally marks counting her days alone in the tower, the crown emblematic of the regal status she left behind, mm -hmm. the handkerchief she was supposed to give him as a token of thanks, all while a sparse piano rendition of the franchise's main theme lingers in the background. It is haunting. <sighs> then Donkey finds some waffles. Turns out, it's a trap! Shock and Dr. Donkey Schmertz find a bunch of other ogres and Fiora! Who does not want romance in the slightest, no siree. But Donkey fell in your waffle hole. <laughs> Shamrock can't give up. He tries to woo her with, again, the same imagery from the first movie. Frog balloon. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't work. But once again, Donkey is a great help. You're in trouble, Romeo, because the only thing that Fiona cares about is her cause. So Shrek decides to commit to the cause. He trains with Fiona and they actually start kindling something. Dragon goes under the bridge, through the loop, and finally into the castle. Oh my god, the wholesome meter is off the charts. And Puss can tell that the spark is there. Oh yeah, also it's really cute that Donkey is the one who wants to keep Puss. Another great reversal of the original mm -hmm. dynamic. Drake, can we keep him? So Sheets is finally gonna tell Fiona everything he knows about her. And while she's initially very mistrusting, her guard begins to get lowered as Shrek tells her more and more, expressing their love, letting her know that he's the person she's waited for her entire life. And that nothing's gonna stop- Oh shit, flute guy, this is bad. <laughs> You and all your friends are about to be enslaved, Cookie! Read the room! Luckily, Donkey and Puss manage to save Shrek and Fiona, even though all the other ogres are captured. Fiona is naturally upset, and while Shrek tries to convince her that true love's kiss will solve everything, she doesn't believe him. Their kiss doesn't work. Oh, Shrek. If only there was someone out there who loved you. Fiona's heart has been completely hardened by all the trauma Frozen. in the tower. Waiting for a true love that never came, and giving up on the idea of true love altogether. 
Look at this absolutely brilliant exchange. Don't you get it? It's all just a big fairy tale. Fiona, don't say that. It does exist. Think about who's saying what right here. If this were Shrek 1, Fiona would be the one insisting on the power of true love, while Shrek would dismiss the notion outright. He literally wipes his ass with this notion. But this scene, which paints a picture of a woman jaded by the harsh reality of the world, and a man who's grown to understand the true kind of love, is downright incredible and speaks to the changes both of these characters have gone through. That's I mean, damn, this is it, people. That's this is the, the rain truth. scene from Megamind. This is the kind moment where everything the movie is carefully set up soars into an incredible, unflinchingly honest moment where we want to side with the guy who's tried to pour his heart out and express his love, but we perfectly understand why the woman won't give him a chance. <laughs> you really so want Shrek to change Fiona's heart, but you can't blame her for not trusting or believing him. She asks him where he was when she needed him, and while he could just say, well, I don't exist in this timeline, <laughs> then he'd have to get into the ugly truth of why this timeline even happened. He wished to be free of her. For a he considered her a burden on his life, which was a horrible, horrible mistake. Shrek has no rebuttal here because he doesn't deserve one. He is the one who made this error in judgment. This incorrect action is a result of his fallacy. It was his blunder. The occurrence was his slip. Oh, God. That was his miscalculation. The villain Don't is do it. <laughs> yeah. a scenario where true love is practically impossible to bloom. Shrek has no choice but to give up on getting his life back. So much like Scott in the cinematic classic, It's Awesome Baby, he instead moves on and tries to improve this universe since he can't return to his own one. Herein lies one of the most brilliant story beats of the film. Shrek turns himself into Rumple in order to get a wish, but he isn't here to get his life back. Instead, he wishes for the freedom of all the ogres. He saves Fiona's cause and keeps hope alive for this twisted universe. He has no real reason to. This isn't his universe. This isn't his Fiona. He'll be dead in a few hours anyway. What's the point? Mm. Rumple even kind of mocks him for this wish. I don't know. Not much of a storybook ending. The noble Shrek turns himself in to save a bunch of filthy ogres. But a noble, happy ending doesn't matter to Shrek anymore. He chooses to accept the end of his old life and wish Fiona to safety, closing the door and returning home, but hopefully ensuring that she gets a happily ever after. Oh, oh god damn it. Yeah, like I said earlier, Fiona isn't all ogre, yeah. so she didn't count. Oops. Friggin' oof. And the imagery here while they're chained apart, coupled with the music while the villain laughs at them. This story is a fucking epic. Why am I the only one who sees that? But yeah, <laughs> this is what finally causes Fiona to appreciate Shrek. He's put his own selfish needs before hers the entire movie. But now he's finally genuinely done something in service of her needs. Just like in Shrek 1 when he saved her from a sham of a marriage. Just like in Shrek 2 when he put everything on the line and changed who he was just to make her happy. Here, the story concludes with Shrek illustrating that he loves her so much that he's accepted his impending death just to keep the last spark of hope within her alive. That is remarkably powerful. And it leads to a sensational climax where the ogres bust Rumple's one remaining ball, Donkey and Dragon reenact that one scene from Endgame, Shrek and Fiona yeah. together to chain Dragon up, and something something chimichangas. We won! Everyone's excited! Except Shrek is dying. For realsies this time, not for fakesies like Ebola the movie. And so, Fiona says goodbye as Shrek accepts his fate, grateful for the life he's already lived with Fiona, short as it may have been. There has to be something I can do. You've already done everything for me, Fiona. <laughs> he thanks her for all the amazing things she's given him, their wonderful life, their beautiful family, and lets her know that one day, she'll have a family of her own in this now liberated world. And this is the last thing he says. You know what the best part of today was? I got the chance to fall in love with you all over again. God, it's a so perfect so way of putting it. God, it's so much this so engaging, heartfelt, well-written, incredibly powerful adventure unfold, I got the chance to fall in love with the Shrek franchise all over it's again. It's so beautiful. They share a kiss as Shrek disappears. But Fiona remains an ogre. True love's kiss was real all along. The world around Rumpelstiltskin crumbles, and we go back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. We're back <laughs> at the party where Shrek is finally Eminem reunited with his family. 
having grown to appreciate the life he has and the people who really made everything worthwhile. And then they drop the single best line in the entire series on us. You know, I always thought that I rescued you from the Dragon's Keep. <laughs> you did? No. It was you that rescued me. Wow. So that concludes the story of Shrek. With a bonus rendition of I'm a Believer as the cherry on top of this delicious chimichanga. I don't know why the ogres are here since this is a different timeline, but whatever. It's Meh. a curtain call. Use, Use your, your imagination. imagination. And then the credits, which showcase the most iconic <laughs> moments throughout the entire franchise and also Shrek the third scene. It's just one big love letter to Shrek, and I absolutely adore it. So now the movie's over. Wow. What an incredible, witty, emotional, well-written masterpiece. I'm so glad it got the critical respect it deserved. Oops. <gasps> Oops. Shrek Forever After is a true return to form for the series. This story takes the emotional strengths of the first two movies, retools them to fit into a unique, twisted setting, and tells a compelling, it made money. story that gives an immense feeling of closure for the characters and narrative as a whole. But it feels like nobody agrees with me on this sentiment. Like, why are you booing me? I'm right. Hmm. It's okay to not like this movie. It's fine if you come to Shrek for lighthearted comedy and this movie wasn't what you were looking for. But for the love of all things holy, stop calling this movie a simple cash grab. <laughs> if it were a cash grab, it wouldn't have ended the series. Shrek the Third was a cash grab that tainted everyone's view of Shrek and made everyone think it was some stupid kitty shit. This movie is the conclusion of a compelling story. It is not an Ice Age sequel. It is not a Despicable Mequel. Ugh. It's an artistic achievement that may or may not work for you, but it wasn't conceived out of cynical laziness. Get that thought out of your head. And I know no one's gonna agree with me about that. I mean, people on Letterboxd don't even think it's better than Shrek the Third. 2.6 versus 2.5, huh? Ugh. That stings. But unlike the trash pile that is Rotten Tomatoes, it's hard to argue with this site's rankings. I guess people really do hate this movie the most, and I'm alone on this one. I mean, I know opinions be opinions and all that, and everyone has their own, but I really thought other people had this opinion. I wasn't the only one, but maybe I am. If it's true what they say, if there's nothing to be done, no one else thinks this is great, let alone on par with one. Is it true what they say? Is this how the world is? To be told that this great film is worse than Boss Baby and Shark Tale, it'll always be like this. Come if on. It's true what they say. That's ridiculous. On my way. But who are they to say what the truth is anyway? Because the ones who rank the films always say the fourth is bad. But that's really just because that dumb third one made them mad. And the ones who made this film are so proud of what they did and it didn't go this hard just to get treated like shit so I'm asking if it's true I'm asking me and you and you and you I believe our ratings matter more than anything they say We should all log into Letterboxd, give it good scores today. Hmm. I believe this is the way. Also, give Shrek 3 a bad score, because its number is too high. Yeah. I believe this movie's awesome, and I'm not the only guy. Others like this movie, not just I. I believe that we are many. I believe that they are few. And it isn't for the few to tell the many what is true. So I ask you, if it's true what they say, I'll be on my way. Tell me what to do. 
Is it true? Is it true what they say? <laughs> wow, that's the take, man. That's it. That's the one. Mrs. Obama, I've done it. I've talked about the entire Shrek franchise. Thank you, Shape Frillis. Now I am free to watch all of the reviews of Shrek. Not if I have anything to say about it. And I do. <gasps> oh, yeah. Mrs. Obama, I'll be right back. Oh. But now it's time to bring everything we've learned over the course of the past year full circle. Time to talk about Shrek yes! 1 and conclude this series with a retro Shrek date. Yes, yes, yes. I can't wait. I can't also, wait. I can't wait. Musical, I guess, sure. But yeah, before sure. we get to that, I need... Like... Well, what can I say, man? <sighs> Honestly, I still don't understand why that film gets so much unnecessary hate. I know different opinions and all that, but... Worse than Shark Tale. Worse than Boss Baby. Really? Where's the Trek the Third? Honest, I, I refuse. I refuse to accept that opinion. People say you should respect other opinions, but I can I can acknowledge other opinions, but that does not mean that I can't think that they're bad ones. Uh, but but, but anyway, enough of that. This review was amazing. Of course, Escape Frillis, you've done it again, man. This was absolutely worth the wait. I know you're probably not gonna see this reaction, but if you do. Kudos to you. That song was pretty nice as well. <laughs> it's, thank you very much for acknowledging all the incredible things, how funny and wonderful Rumpelstiltskin is, how emotional and just heartwarming it is to see all these characters and completely new perspectives, like Donkey, uh, when he finds out that he's a dad, or whenever Shrek and Fiona have that exchange on the bridge. Ugh, so heartbreaking and emotional and... It's not, it's not the funny me man that I'm used to. So, <laughs> thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.